Okay, hello, and welcome to the latest episode of Innovations in Education, eSchool News' podcast on the latest and greatest happenings in K-12 ed tech this week. I'm Kevin Hogan, and I'm glad you found us. First off, as the deadline for eSchool News' 2022 Hero Awards approaches, I had the opportunity to talk with Kelly Goodman. She's the manager of expense management at the legendary Florida Virtual School, and Jim McClurkin, he's a director of state and local government at SAP Concur, about her nomination for this year's awards. At first glance, I have to say I was a bit confused about how an expense management system could be seen as heroic. But as Kelly explains, if the back end is not solid state and efficient, instruction falters and learning will slow. Have a listen. Okay, Kelly, Jim, thanks so much for joining me today. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks for having me. I guess let's uh, get started, Kelly, and talk a little bit about Florida Virtual School. Now, I know I, I've covered it for many years. Uh, it's kind of the granddaddy of uh, remote learning, but give our listeners a little bit of a uh, history and background. Sure. Um, we began in 1997 um, and in 2000 became a individual school district in the state of Florida. Uh, we were created by the legislature um, to be the online public K through 12 option in the state of Florida. Um, we started with just a handful of employees and students and we ha now have oh, about 3,500 employees and we've served uh, 234,000 students in the state of Florida in the last year. Um, and we are the, the kind of nationwide leader in public uh, virtual education. Now, when uh, the, the company was founded and the organization was started, I don't think global pandemics were probably uh, part of the mission when it came to uh, putting yeah. together remote learning, right? No, it, I don't think we were even thinking about that possibility. But luckily, we were set up when the pandemic hit to already teach virtually. We were already a fully virtual organization. Yeah, we'll talk about that time a little bit. I mean, was it, um, well, I mean, because you were as prepared, if not more prepared than, than most, but I'm sure it must have still been a, a, a struggle. It was a struggle because we grew rapidly. We took on a lot of students and teachers um, in that time. And so, and, and also provided training to teachers across the state, uh, brick and mortar teachers that had never taught online turned to us for that training to, to learn how to teach online, to learn how to serve their students. Um, so we had to very quickly pivot and not only serve our students, but serve the teachers across the state so we could get them up and running without too much interruption. Yeah, and Jim, talk a little bit about um, Florida Virtual School from, from your perspective. What was it that compelled you uh, to nominate them for a HERO Award? Well, you know, for us as a technology company, um, you know, we're always looking for innovative public organizations. You know, I, I represent the public sector for SAP Concur, and Kelly and the team at Florida Virtual School has been really the, at the forefront of driving everything technologically as far as efficiencies and solutions, right? And the key there is that when they can drive those efficiencies, now they're able to spend more of their money teaching and less of it administrating. And so when you look at that, the ability to move to spending more dollars on education versus back office, it's a tremendous story for virtual school. Yeah, and that's an interesting aspect of it too, Kelly. Um, you know, we're talking about a lot of times um, the, the technology that's in the classroom, uh, the pedagogy, especially when you look at remote learning and, and a lot of the, the, the change behaviors there. Um, that kind of takes the forefront when people talk about the technology in schools. Mm -hmm. uh, when we talk about SAP and, and back office and administrative tasks, uh, sometimes uh, they're, they're, they're put in the back office, right? <laughs> for for right. a reason. Talk a little bit about uh, the importance of it from running you know, an organization like Florida Virtual School. Well, so my team, we are the expense management team. So we deal with travel, expense reimbursement, purchasing card, um, and it's easy to feel like you don't even work for a school sometimes because you're just looking at money, finance, that kind of stuff. Um, but when the pandemic hit, it really, it affected us in that we were, all travel came to a virtual stop. We had to figure out what were we doing during this time? How do we, how do we continue to be valuable? Um, and so we started to look at, well, what processes can we 
make more efficient? What can we optimize so that when our teachers are traveling again, it's easier for them to just jump back in and get moving? So we took that time to really look at our systems, to look at what were we doing that could be improved? And we found a couple areas where we were able to make improvements. So now that everyone is moving again, things are flowing in a much better way. We have optimized workflows. We have efficient processes. We, where we used to be in multiple systems, we're in one system. And we're finding that it's, it's giving our teachers so much more time to focus on students and get back to what they do so we can, we can get our stuff done and move forward. Yeah. And Jim, you know, talk a little bit about the education space, the education vertical versus, you know, the number of industries that SAP also uh, works with and, and the distinctions there. I mean, what what is it that makes education special? Yeah, sure. Um, thanks, Kevin. Yeah, we have a very large K-12 uh, vertical business, right? So Florida Virtual School lots of large public districts as well as private districts as well as private you know charter schools and and, and across the gambit right um and what what people don't realize is is that a, a, a district something as large as florida virtual school or any of the large districts that we work with they're really like a lot of other organizations they're buying things they're they're paying for things they're they're you know all those same kind of functions still happen right um, now when the pandemic hit a lot of it shifted you know it moved from travel expense for us to a lot of it to uh, invoice processing and doing you know because now all of a sudden people were dispersed you know they were used to going to a brick and mortar building now they weren't i have a unique experience that i see it because i have national responsibility I see, I see it across the country, right? And, and people are really struggling early to figure out and get their feet underneath them. Um, teachers were, were remote, students were remote, uh, administrators were being redeployed to other types of jobs that they weren't used to doing. Um, so it was really, the first part of it was kind of chaos. But then as people started understanding, okay, this is, like Kelly said, an opportunity for us to evaluate how we've been doing things and let's get better and take the time to get better. Those districts are way ahead of the others now because they took the time to evaluate what I call their tech debt. It's like, okay, I'm looking here. I got a big gap in technology here. Here's a spot we can fix while we have time. Yeah. So it was really taking the opportunity of the moment as terrible as it was and, and, and turning it into advantage. Absolutely. <laughs> Yeah. Kelly, talk a little bit about your work with SAP specifically in the technologies. It's sounding to me that it's as much about finding new processes as much as it is about using a new piece of technology, right? It's just not the tech itself, but how you use it. Absolutely. Yeah, we, um, we, we were able to optimize some of our processes using the things that we already had that we just didn't have the chance to look at them in that way. And the, the pandemic really gave us that time to evaluate that stuff and figure out oh, how can we use this better? How can we you know, improve this with what we have? And so a simple example was our uh, purchasing card purchases. We used to reconcile them in the banking system, which created a lot of overlap. There, was a lot, there were a lot of things that might've needed to be put in your concur expense report that also needed to be put in the banking system. It caused confusion for our users. There was, our users were spending a lot of time doing things that shouldn't have taken a lot of time. And so when we looked at that, we thought, well, if we move that reconciliation into Concur, we put everything in one place, all of their expenses, P-card and personal are in one report. They can, they only have to upload uh, receipts one time, things like that. Um, it, it was such an improvement for our staff that are doing those things that they were just able to get back to focusing on students so much faster. And, you know, at, at FLVS, the student truly is the center of every decision we make, regardless of where, what team we're on. So the things that we improve on our side really do affect the students, even if we're not directly touching them. So we've, we've seen other improvements as well. We were able to implement expense pay through Concur, which automates our expense reimbursement. So teachers are not waiting a month or six weeks to get their reimbursements, they're getting them within a week of submitting those expense reports, which in this economy is huge for them. And it, it's a, it takes a load off their shoulders. They're not worrying when they're going to get that money back. They're able to just move on and teach their kids. And it sounds to me like these are not 
stopgap measures that you had to take during the pandemic and now you're going to go back to normal, right? I mean, these oh, are no. things that are, yeah. are in place. Yeah, these are moving forward. That we, we these will stay in place. Yeah, we we really have looked for those efficiencies that are going to be long term help to to everybody that's involved. And now, uh, Jim, does this sound like a, a common story? I mean, this is something you see with with other districts, or is Florida you know, kind of a an exception? No, it's absolutely common uh, for our customer base. And what we see is in kind of the life cycle of a customer, right? Kelly is moving into what we refer to as the optimization phase. We get people in, they start working with it. They, you know, they kind of crawl with the solution. And then when they really get to start working with it, now they're walking and Kelly's getting ready to move into the run phase, right? Where now you're optimizing, you're taking advantage of all the data because previously they didn't even know how much they'd spent or where they spent it or I'm talking for you, Kelly, I apologize, but it's a common thing I see. You know, I see across the, our, our, our customer base where, you know, they don't even know where, where they are in cash flow because money's being spent. It hasn't been reconciled yet. It hasn't been paid. It could be weeks to get paid. All of these things are now all condensed. And now Kelly and her team have access to all this data in near real time to say, we're spending money here. Why are we just, I had a, uh, in that same state, by the way, a conversation recently where you know thirty thousand hotel nights had been had money had been spent on, and they had absolutely no tracking ability whatsoever to understand. Go get a discount. Where did it pay? Where did it, you know all these things, right? So, so it's common, and and Kelly and her team have done a fantastic job, and they're really now at the point where now we can really optimize. We can really start tweaking this thing yeah. and get the out of it. Well, Kelly, talk about uh, any advice that you would give to other districts who might be in, a, in facing similar challenges to this. Uh, maybe they're still in that, that, that crawl phase uh, that, that Jim mentioned. What would be the first steps that you would uh, recommend to them? Um, I think just, you know, take a look at what you have and how are you using it and how can it be different? You know, what maybe look at other districts and see what they are doing. Are, are there examples they can you know, follow, but using the, the tools that you have, especially, you know, working for the state of Florida, it's not, we, we don't have, we can't just go out and get every single tech piece of technology. We kind of have to do a little, you know, optimizing with what we have um, and being able to look at things in a new way, you know, Concur offers a lot of training courses and webinars, things where you can go learn. I'm sure other other products do as well. Um, and so just look and see what you're, what, what's available to you that you might be able to use or what are you doing now that might be able to be done in a different way and ultimately better. It's a really professional development from the, uh, from the back office. It's not just for teachers, huh? Absolutely, yeah. The, the better we do, the, the better it is for the teacher. So the more that we can make, you know, come up with efficiencies, the more that we can optimize, the better their experience is gonna be. If, if a teacher is spending two hours doing an expense report and we can take that down to 15 minutes, that's a huge improvement. That's that's so much time gained from for the students. Yeah. And Jim, I guess it's the, the same question for you. When, when, when you see districts who are in, the, in that crawl phase, what are your recommendations uh, for getting, uh, getting up and walking? Sure. Um, and Kelly hit the nail on the head. We refer to it as adults, arts and crafts. Uh, which teachers are usually better at than normal people anyway, arts and crafts, but, um, you know, doing all the expense accounts and the, the receipts and, you know, taking all that time away um, kind of thing. But it's, it's, it's an issue for people. And in the crawl phase, you know, you, you have to get into, the, in, in, well, there's change management, right? And Kelly, I'm sure, could tell you this, that change is hard. Right? So you have to prepare on the front end before you start that crawl, crawl phase. Hey, we're going to move. We're going to move to a technology. We're going to change how we do things. And and you've got to get the staff to buy in. People have got to be all in with the change and feel like they're part of the change. Otherwise, you run into people who don't want to do that, and you have, you have you have adoption problems, or you have you know problems getting it off the ground and running. So in that crawl phase, you got to. You have to first analyze where your gaps are in your, in your technology, pick the right technology, and then work with your teams on the change management portion of it because it's really critical to get a successful launch 
of a technology that everybody's behind it and feel they have ownership of it. So that's a really important part on the front end for people to be successful and get through that first phase. Yeah. All right, well, to, to wrap things up here, Kelly, what is on um, your wish list? What, what next? What are, what are the, the, the tools or practices that you're hoping to uh, put together over the next couple of years to, to continue uh, Florida Virtual School's success? Um, well, we have some projects in mind. We, re- we just put in expense pay that I mentioned that before, the automation of those reimbursements. So we're about a month into to getting that in, into production and seeing how that works out. So we're looking forward to, to you know, continuing down that road and getting, getting people their money back faster. Um, we, we're also looking into upgrading our purchasing card program. There's some modern products out there that we would like to take advantage of, you know, now that we are in this completely virtual world, um, the, the world of virtual payments and things like things that can make it easier on our teachers. We have teachers that have to travel to schools on a regular basis. And if we can take away the, the pain of paying for a hotel and having to be reimbursed or, or having any out-of-pocket expenses, then that's, that's where we want to go. So we really want to make travel for, for all of our staff as painless as possible and make them front as little dollars as possible so they can just focus on what they need to do with our students. Well, that's great. And uh, congratulations on your nomination. Thank Good luck. You. Uh, thank you for all your hard work for, for the students. Jim, thank you for your time and, and your, your insights in this conversation. And uh, we'll look forward to uh, seeing how the awards work out. <laughs> thank, thank you so you much. much. Thank you. And I'm, I'm rooting for you, Kelly. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> thank you.